It's a disturbing hobby, collecting murderabilia. Here's some of Charles Manson's artwork. A Richard Ramirez piece that I just got. He was known as the Night Stalker. And this one has a personalized note on the back from Gacy. Items once belonging to famous murderers are sold on various websites. I was so enraged by the entire proposition that this could even go on that it's almost hard to describe. Mark Class's 12-year-old daughter, Polly Class, is gone. But Richard Allen Davis, her killer, used to make money off of his crime. And Mr. Davis, when you get to where you're going, say hello to Hitler, say hello to Dahmer, and say hello to Bundy. Class learned that photos of Davis in the prison yard at San Quentin were being sold online, as well as drawings he made from death row. I was completely outraged that he would profiteer off of my misery and my daughter's demise. I was of the opinion that you, know, you just shouldn't be able to rob, rape, and murder and then turn around and, and make a buck off of it. Andy Kahn is a victim's advocate who told class about Davis's photos for sale. I came up with a cool, crafty name for this wacky new business called Murderabilia. One collector looks at this in a different way. So those are Charles Manson's sweatpants. Ryan Graveface shows us around his Savannah, Georgia warehouse of Murderabilia. I've got multiple paintings of Elvis by John Wayne Gacy. He collects, but doesn't sell. So that's probably why, you know, victims' families have never approached me. And I would have a really good conversation with them if they ever did, it, you know, just for having the stuff. This is the world famous Poe with a Clown painting. He says he has many paintings by John Wayne Gacy. This whole case is just filled with Gacy stuff. Gacy murdered, raped, and tortured at least 33 boys, mostly in his small Illinois community, where he was known for dressing up as a clown to entertain folks at church events and birthday parties. I just enjoy collecting it. It's not cerebral. I'm not thinking of it in like a profound way. We're all just weirdo collectors. But life is so freaking boring. Andy Kahn collects murderabilia too, but as a victim's advocate. This is an actual piece of the shirt of John Wayne Gacy, better known as the killer clown. This is actually prison issued socks of a California serial killer named Lawrence Bitteker. This is a piece of Charles Manson's hair. Manson generally sells his hair in the form of a swastika. What I do with these is when I go and I do lectures and when I do conferences, all this stuff accompanies me in a duffel bag and I just show people this industry actually does exist. They're usually shocked, they're stunned, they're flabbergasted that this exists. Most of them had no idea that this is a thriving industry. Right here is actual artwork from the Happy Face Killer, better known as Keith Jesperson, right here. And as you can see, some of the artwork that Jesperson sent me, you can see right here the detail of the artwork. It is a business for profit, and it bottom line is blood money. Khan has helped some states pass laws to stop the sale of murderabilia. California and Texas are two of eight states he says that have passed notoriety for profit laws, meaning it's illegal for convicted criminals to make money from selling tangible goods through third-party dealers. For Mark Class, anything to get killers' items off the market. To have these wounds reopened time and time and time again when somebody is somehow making money off of the hideous crime they committed against my daughter or somebody else's daughter. This is InsideEdition.com.